Welcome to the Inquisitive Archivist. This episode is about the true story of Pablo Escobar, a.k.a. the Cocaine Bear. Andrew Thornton was many things during his life. He was a paratrooper with the 82nd Airborne Division, a racehorse trainer, a narcotics police officer, a lawyer, and a drug smuggler. On September 11, 1985, his body was found on the driveway of Knoxville, Tennessee resident Fred Myers. At the time of his death, he was wearing a bulletproof vest, Gucci loafers, and had a failed parachute strapped to his back. He had night vision goggles, a green army duffel bag containing 75 pounds of cocaine worth $15 million, $4,500 cash, six gold coins, knives, two guns, several clips of ammunition, a stiletto shoe, identification papers in two different names, a membership card to the Miami Jockey Club, a book containing names and code, and the key to an airplane. Hundreds showed up to his funeral. It was a who's who in Kentucky. It was a crowd of police officers, horse breeders, gamblers, lawyers, businessmen, and shady hangers on. Andrew had lived a storied life. In 1981, one of his associates, Bradley Bryant, was arrested for marijuana possession. Police found a notebook on Bryant that had the names of 25 people who police believe were helping him smuggle marijuana into the country. Thornton was charged with conspiracy to import and distribute marijuana, to steal government property from the China Lake Naval Base, and of piloting a DC-4 loaded with marijuana. He went on the run. The search for him intensified when U.S. Customs agents seized a 56 converted minesweeper carrying 1,500 pounds of marijuana and discovered that a machine gun on board belonged to Thornton. He was eventually arrested and paid $75,000 cash and a $1 million surety for his bail. He pleaded no contest to the charges and served six months at a minimum security facility in Lexington. After his release, he was sought by various jurisdictions in relation to what police called vendetta murders of three of his associates. On September 9, 1985, Andrew Thornton, along with Bill Leonard, who was his karate instructor turned bodyguard, hopped in a Cessna 404 and flew to Monteria, Colombia. Leonard claims that Thornton told them they were flying to the Bahamas, but that mid-flight, Thornton told him where they were really going and why. If he had known the true reason of the trip, Leonard said he never would have gone. He alleges they were picking up 400 kilograms of cocaine to smuggle into the U.S. The kilos of cocaine were wrapped in yellow plastic, put inside burlap bags, and then placed inside duffel bags that had been outfitted with parachutes. On the flight back to the U.S., somewhere over Florida, they heard federal agents talking over the radio about following their plane. Thornton put the plane into autopilot, gave Leonard a quick skydiving lesson, threw three duffel bags out of the plane before they both jumped. Leonard's parachute opened, but Thornton's parachute didn't. Leonard landed near the Knoxville airport. He did what Thornton had told him to do, which was walk to a grocery store, take a cab, and meet Thornton's girlfriend at the Hyatt Hotel in downtown Knoxville. Thornton said he would meet him there so they could go back to Kentucky together. The Cessna 404 crashed on Tuskegee Bald Mountain in Clay County, North Carolina, after the two men had jumped. Authorities believe there was more cocaine than what was found on Thornton. They searched the surrounding areas and found a 220-pound bag hanging from a parachute in a tree in Fannin County, Georgia. More duffel bags were found over the following months, but not before a 175-pound black bear in northern Georgia 
found a duffel bag and ingested so much that it overdosed and died. 40 empty packets with traces of cocaine were found next to him. An autopsy was performed and found that the overdose caused the bear to suffer from cerebral hemorrhaging, respiratory failure, hypothermia, renal failure, stroke, and heart failure. Pablo Escobar was taxidermied and put on display at the Chattahoochee River National Recreation Area in Georgia. It was stolen and resurfaced in the private collection of country legend Waylon Jennings. Escobar eventually made his way to serving as a decoration in a traditional Chinese medicine shop in Reno, Nevada. He was then sold to a centric retailer, Kentucky for Kentucky Fun Mall, for the low price of $200, where he continues to remain on display. Remember, kids, Pablo Escobar says, don't do drugs and don't be starting forest fires either.